Welcome to Future Talk. On today's program, we're going to talk about biomedical ethics. In the past few years, science has made huge strides in understanding the basic workings of life. And this has given us some very powerful new medical tools. But it's also created some difficult ethical problems. The trade-offs between the quality of life versus the quantity of life, the allocation but vital but scarce medical resources, and defining what makes a human being human are just some of the issues that doctors and researchers are struggling with on a daily basis. Here to discuss biomedical ethics is one of the leaders in the field, Professor David Magnus. Dr. Magnus is the director of the Stanford Center for Biomedical Ethics and co-chair of the Ethics Committee for Stanford Hospital. He's also co-editor of the American Journal of Bioethics and was the principal editor of a book of essays called Who Owns Life? He currently serves on the California Human Stem Cell Research Advisory Committee. We have a very short video that introduces the topic of biomedical ethics. We're going to show that video and then we'll get into our conversation. So let's go ahead and roll that tape. Common morality theories are usually based on principles that are used to guide ethical thinking based on a shared moral belief. One of these theories is bioethics, the ethics of biology, biological research, and the applications of that research. It is an ethical theory that brings together medicine, the law, social sciences, philosophy, theology, politics, and other disciplines to address questions related to clinical decision making and medical research. And that was our introductory video into the field of biomedical ethics. Professor Magnus, what would you say is the most controversial issue in biomedical ethics today? Well, one of the things that's interesting about the field of bioethics is that what's the most controversial issue seems to change about every week or every two weeks. I would say right now what's going on literally in the last two weeks that's made a very hot button issue are a couple of issues around stem cell research. Uh, in particular, and two big developments in the last, last week or so. One is that a federal uh, judge has uh, issued a ruling which basically shut down the Obama administration's plans for allowing federal funding of stem cell research with a very far-reaching ruling that potentially um, would have shut down research even under the Bush administration as well as under the Clinton administration. Uh, and, in the, and in the immediate impact of this, they've granted an injunction which is now preventing uh, future granting of any uh, federal funds for uh, any embryonic stem cell research. Nope. So that's a very big development. Now, what was the rationale for that? Well, um, there were there were a couple of different things. They they it was motivated primarily uh, f uh, by the what's called the Dickey Wicker Amendment. There's an amendment to the uh, uh, annual appropriation budget, which has been passed every year for quite a number of years, which makes it illegal for any federal funding uh, to be spent on the destruction of embryos. Now, traditionally, uh, NIH and and the both the the, uh, the Bush administration, the Obama administration, and actually the Clinton administration before them have all interpreted that to mean you couldn't actually use NIH funds to fund any research that actively destroys embryos, but it was okay to do research on the products of uh, destroyed embryos. So as long as you don't pay for the actual destruction of embryos, if somebody else does it, you could do research on the cells that were so created. That's also consistent with all the states that have laws that make it illegal to destroy embryos to create stem cells, but allow research on stem cells once they're created. Uh, what happened was that this um, judge said that that's illegitimate, that um, the fact that, that um, it sort of asked, don't ask, don't tell applied to stem cells. Uh, the fact that uh, you have to destroy embryos to produce these stem cells means that this is a violation of Dickey Wicker. Uh, granting an injunction requires more than that. They have to also say that there's an immediate harm to individuals and that nobody will be harmed by or there will be limited amount of harm by granting the injunction. And I have to say I thought the reasoning in that was quite uh, strained uh, in that decision. But they did wind up uh, saying that because of the harm to adult stem cell researchers, they would grant an injunction. Now why would the researchers suffer harm? The argument was that there's a limited amount of funding at NIH, and so if there's money available to embryonic stem cell researchers, that means there's less money for adult stem cell researchers. Now, is the idea here that an embryo is somehow a full human being with all the rights of a human being? I mean, aren't, aren't embryos destroyed routinely? So, for example, let's say a woman can't get pregnant the normal way, so she wants in vitro fertilization, but the chance of any one egg succeeding might be low, so you want to fertilize a bunch, so you increase your chances. 
and then you have all the extra ones, you know, what do you do with those? Oh, I think that's a, a great point, and nobody has really challenged directly um, IVF, or at least not, not made a very big public um, approach to that, although in fact IVF is opposed by the Catholic Church and a number of groups that are also opposed to stem cell research. So part of this is that this is obviously a very, very politically divisive issue in our country between those who believe that um, starting a conception even outside the body, you've got the creation of a person with all the moral rights uh, of, of, a, of, a, of a baby, essentially. However, the courts have never uh, ruled that, uh, um, and the Supreme Court in particular has never ruled that, that that uh, such uh, entities have full uh, legal standing. So it can't be that the judge's decision was based on that. And in fact, early court attempts to try and block the Obama administration uh, and for, with their regulations and their attempt to go forward with funding did try to sue uh, on behalf of the embryos who would be destroyed. That was thrown out and they were found not to have standing uh, before the court. So this is something um, slightly different. It's basically the court is really saying um, whatever people think about the status of the embryo, um, it's clear that it's divisive. And because of that, um, there's been a sort of agreement in practice um, that slides around a little bit, but that uh, embryos essentially have moral intermediate status. They don't have the full rights uh, uh, that uh, infants do or that humans do to be able to consent to research, for example. But at the same time, they deserve a certain amount of respect and a certain amount of protection. And also there's a, uh, an idea that we need to respect the views of those who are opposed to this research. And for that reason, the actual destruction of the embryos um, in, in this amendment that's never you know, been really challenged uh, prevents the actual spending of, of federal funding on the actual destruction. Isn't it difficult to get politics involved in it because research takes years to do? And if you have two political groups of roughly equal strength, one party can allow certain things and then the next year the other party will disallow it. It's very hard to plan anything in an orderly way if the regulations you depend on can change capriciously. Yeah, and it's been actually uh, very frustrating for the, for the research com uh, community and it's been even more complicated than that because in addition to federal regulation, there's also state regulation and it's quite a patch a patchwork quilt of regulations across the states, ranging from states like California that actively support embryonic stem cell research and fund it to states where it's a crime to do research that involves the destruction of the embryo. So that makes it really challenging. And when the rules keep changing, which they have done constantly, you have the Bush administration and their restrictions that were put in place. We were very disappointed in some ways that the Obama administration, while nominally more pro-stem cell research, nonetheless were not very um, uh, liberal about grandfathering in the stem cell lines that the Bush administration had, had been willing to fund research on. The Bush administration policy, uh, for, for those who don't remember, said that any embryos that were destroyed to create stem cells prior to September 2001 were uh, eligible for federal funding for research and nothing that came later. As a result of that decision, a lot of research has gone on on those cells that were created prior to 2001 and they're very well characterized and researchers are used to using them. And when the Obama administration came in, they liberalized in some ways and allowed federal funding of new stem cell lines, but instead of grandfathering in all those older stem cell lines, they said if they, if they were worried about the consent and whether the consents were really adequate, they were not necessarily going to allow research to go forward with those. And that meant a lot of researchers who'd been relying over the past four or five years on, on those uh, stem cells for their research now suddenly would no longer be eligible for federal funding.